Hello and welcome. This is my short video for May 2022. In this video, I'll be talking about one of the ancillary uses of the Mengu, facial armor. Sorry if I sound congested. The weather has been up and down here the last few days, and it seems to have caused me to catch a cold. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of the people that that happens to. It might not be the only video this month for this series. I have been considering the shorter ones to perhaps do more than just one sometimes, but I still do not want to spoil too much topics that I plan to cover in the future. Samurai and Ninja History will be doing videos on this topic this month. As of the time of recording, I am not sure if the Shogunate will be doing one. It seems the channel Samurai Traditions of the Tada Genji has also posted a video for this project, so perhaps he'll be doing one this month as well. I don't know yet though. Uh, go and check out those channels though for Samurai related content. Videos will be added to the playlist when I become aware of them, being available as usual, with the link to said playlist in the pinned comment below. Mengu means something along the lines of face equipment. Men referring to the face, a mask, or a surface. And gu having numerous meanings like tool, equipment, a piece of something, among some others. You will sometimes even hear gu used in cooking, meaning ingredients, just to show how varied the meanings of a word and kanji can be. Both of these words have multiple other meanings. In this context, mengu means the various types of facial armor. The most well-known style of mengu would probably be the men pole, usually covering the face below the eyes, although there were other styles. The word men pole is made up with the word for face as above, and then hole, which in this case is pronounced pole, which means jaw and or cheeks. On the screen is one example of a men pole. Some of them were solid, but it was very common for the nose piece to be removable. Here circled in blue, you will see where the nose piece connects. Another common style of Mengu was this, the Hanbo, or one that covers basically along the jawline and chin. Han meaning half in this instance. Removing the nose piece of a Menpo basically would turn it functionally into the same type of armor as a Hanbo would be, more or less. Both Hanbo and Menpo also usually had plates hanging from under the chin to protect the throat, so they were not exclusively facial protection. When looking at Mengu, you may have noticed protrusions, here circled in white. If you have ever wondered what they are or their purpose, then hopefully this video will provide you with a little bit of an answer. They are called Oda no Yori or Ore Kugi. The exact placement and orientation of them can vary. Now, in movies and shows, you often see the kabuto secured in this under and over the chin method all the time. In reality, though, if a samurai was not wearing mengu, they would very frequently have tied it only under the chin. There are accounts that tying it in this under and over method without mengu was extremely uncomfortable, leading to rashes and even open sores. However, tying it just under the chin was less secure than the under and over method. I have heard a story that supposedly facial hair helped with this and may have been one of the reasons for facial hair being common among the samurai, although it seems like this is at least most likely bunk. The mengu provided protection for the face from the cords of the kabuto. While the guard itself allowed for some protection from the cords, these protrusions aided in securing the cords more firmly to minimize slipping. They also allowed the mask to be more tightly secured against the face. Thus, both pieces of armor were more secure and less likely to slip. It is hard to say how many samurai went into combat wearing mengu. It was another piece of protection, but for reasons like cost and preference among a number of others, a samurai may not have had the option to wear one, or may have chosen not to. Some accounts and iconography would suggest that it was not relegated to purely decorative use though, at least in the Sengoku period, and some form of mengu was worn in combat by at least some samurai sometimes. And this commonality has been something that has been discussed and debated. I think taking this additional use of the mengu into account needs to be part of that consideration. Considering these benefits in addition to the general protective nature of the mengu, it seems quite likely to me that at least most of the samurai who could afford mengu would have probably worn them in combat. In addition, I do not mean to suggest that using the protrusions and the mengu and all that to help secure helmets and to secure the mengu to the face and all these things eliminated all the issues. I am sure in the heat of battle, helmets and mengu slipped and fell off and other stuff at times. But this was one way in which the samurai tried to minimize the chances of that happening.
I hope you've enjoyed this brief video. Again, the playlist for these topical videos by others participating will be in the pinned comment. I suggest you go and check out their videos and channels. Please consider sharing, leaving a comment, and rating. If you would like to be updated about new content, please think about subscribing and clicking the bell icon. Links to social media are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you will come back again. For now, take care.